Please find your way to a seated position at your mat toward the front or maybe the middle. Take a seat that feels comfortable, maybe legs crossed or sitting on your knees. If you need a prop, you can sit on top of a block or a blanket, something where you can just find some ease and find a full breath. If you've not already, allow your eye gaze to soften, blurring everything out. If you'd like, you can completely allow your eyes to close. Quickly check in with your body. Does anything feel tight? Loose, soft, relaxed, tense? Not good, not bad. Simply acknowledge where you are. And if someplace feels tight and it feels like you can't quite loosen it on your exhales, then allow yourself to have a little movement. So for example, if you feel like your neck is tight, just a little bit of a wobble, and then come back to stillness. You'll have more opportunity to move, so always know that that is true. You don't need to get everything else out now. Just get yourself to a place where you can recognize your current state. And then we're going to engage in a breathing exercise. If you'd like, you can place one hand on your heart, one hand on your belly, so that you can feel some of the physical expression of your breath. If you prefer to have your hands down in your lap, take what feels best for you. So first, let's just take a really deep breath in fully and equally. Feel your rib cage expand on all sides. Feel your belly grow large. Feel like the breath can even go through your collarbones, lifting up through the crown of your head. And whenever you exhale, allow everything to come back towards center once again. Then on your next inhale, take a deep breath, feeling your belly puff out in your midsection. And then up all the way through your chest, full expansion. And then on your exhales, feel your chest go down, midsection, belly, and then low belly. As you engage your muscles to encourage that, again, deep breath in through lowest belly, midsection, chest, upper outer back, to the very top. And exhale, reverse, softening through the chest and your upper back. Midsection, low belly. Continue that breathing pattern. Two more rounds, just like that. And then you can leave your hands where they are or take another position as you like. Return to your regular breathing. Equal inhales and exhales. Finding softness, finding brightness, finding space. And this time I'd like to allow you an opportunity to set a dedication or intention for your practice today. Something that you've been working on, something new. And if you're looking for any kind of inspiration, um, this Pema Chandran uh, quote is very popular. A lot of people have heard it. I know that I've said it before. And sometimes help in times like this. You are the sky. Everything else, it's just the weather. You are the sky. Everything else, it's just the weather. If it resonates with you, allow that to guide your practice today. If something else speaks to you, please drift your thoughts to that. And if all this is a bit too much, simply focus on your breath. It's all we can do. And then we're going to take a few breaths together as community. If you'd like, you can bring your palms together at your heart, or you can leave them wherever they are. Take a really deep breath in, fill up all the way, John, everything that supports your dedication, fill all the way to the top. And then exhale, release. Again, next deep breath in. Find softness, find space. 
drawn everything that supports that, which your dedication is, and exhale, release everything that does not support it. And one final inhale and exhale for yourself, however you would like to. And then release your hands back down to your thighs if you lifted them up. And then unfocus your gaze or blink your eyes open. Welcome to the more active part of your practice. We're gonna take a couple neck stretches. So I'm not going to mirror you. <laughs> so you can either mirror me if you'd like, um, or you can follow the sound of my voice. On an inhale, you're gonna reach your right arm up and over. My hand, my fingertips are gonna tap above my left ear, dropping right shoulder away. I'm gonna drop my right ear toward my right shoulder without allowing it to hike up. If you're looking for a little bit more intensity, left fingertips reach out and maybe claw at the earth. If you need a little bit of height, a block can be here as well. Remember to release your right shoulder down away from your right ear. You can stay right here or if you'd like to have a little bit more movement. On an exhale, circle your chin down towards the center of your chest. And then inhale, rock it back. So your ear is more aligned over your shoulder. Take it back down. On an exhale, inhale, rock it back to the right, keep your right shoulder released. Two more times like that. Don't need to have a tug with your fingertips, just the weight of your arm is plenty. And once your right ear is back aligned over right shoulder, take right fingertips to the right side of your head, help your head up. Right hand drops, left hand up and over, release left shoulder away, drop your left ear toward left shoulder again, release away from it. Make sure that you're leaning forward, that you're shifting back so your ears, shoulders, and hips are all about the same line. Again, if you'd like a little bit more extension, right fingertips come out, maybe claw at your mat or the ground, drop your left ear down. And again, if you'd like to take a little bit of movement, it is not required, maybe you've already found your sweet spot. On an exhale, start to cycle your chin down so your chin is about in line with your sternum. Exhale, inhale, start to draw it back, drawing that circle back, back towards the center. Inhale, winding back. Two more times. And then once you bring your ear back in line with shoulder, if you took that movement, left fingertips, the left side of your head, gently press yourself up, take your hands back to your knees. We're going to take a couple seated twists here. So we're starting to find a little bit of movement in our cervical spine and thoracic, we're moving all the way down. So on an inhale, reach your arms out and up, maybe even gaze up, keep your shoulder blades down. On an exhale, twist to your left, right hand to the top of left knee. Left fingertips behind you. For this first time, we're gonna stay here for a couple breaths. So inhale, find length. Maybe even shift your weight over to your right hip a little bit. On your exhale, you twist more deeply. Perhaps you gaze beyond your left shoulder. Stay here for two more breaths. Use your fingertips of your left hand to intensify the twist if you would like. Next, inhale, head back to center, arms lift, come back up. Exhale, twist to the right. Left fingertips to top of knee. Fingertips, right fingertips behind you. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, twist to the right. More weight to the left hip. Two breaths. All right, back to center. Inhale, lift up. Arms lift. We're going to take one breath each time. So exhale, twist to the left. On the next breath in, come back to center. Exhale, twist to the right. Once more like that, either side. Inhale takes you up. Exhale to left. Inhale back up. Exhale to right. Inhale, come back to center. Find length and on an exhale, hands to your heart. And then hands back down to your knees. Whichever way you have crossed your legs, if you're still seated like this, crisscross to the other side to find a little bit more equality. Hip just cracked on brand. We're gonna take a few seated cow and cat. Inhale, swim your heart forward, look up, exhale, lean back, arch your spine, look down towards your belly. Two more times like that. Inhale, carry it forward. Create lots of space through your chest, and on an exhale, lots of space through your back. Once more. Exhale, rock it back. 
We'll come back up to your seat, roll over onto your hands and knees, however is most comfortable to get there. Tabletop position. So we simply want to make sure that we've got a line, wrists to elbows to shoulders, knees to hips. And we're going to take a few more traditional cow-cat. I'm going to move into a cow-cat flow. So first, inhale, drop belly, lift up hips and heart, gaze up, wrap your inner elbows forward as you look up. Exhale, press through hands and knees, look back towards your knees, maybe even curl your head in. Inhale, swim it forward. It's okay to bend your elbows as you come forward. Might take away some stress from your shoulders. Exhale, press up, look back. One more time like that. Inhale, look up. Belly drops. Press through hands and knees. Exhale, press up through your cat pose, arch spine. All right, keeping your shins parallel like they are, we're going to shift hips back towards heels. Completely understand if you don't go all the way back, it requires a lot of hip flexion. So you might still be up, you might come all the way back. We're going to take a, um, an exaggerated cat cow flow. So you can move whenever you'd like. I'll also guide you. Inhale, rise to knees, palms lift, maybe slight back bend, maybe palms touch. Exhale, bow, back to that modified child's pose. It's okay if your hips are lifted. Inhale, keep your belly low, swoop forward into a cow pose. Exhale, press up into cat, keeping the cat shape. Shift your hips back to your heels, modified child. Again, rise to knees. Exalt. Exhale. Bow. Modify child's pose. Inhale. Slither forward. Belly down for cat, cow pose, rather. Exhale. Press up through cat. Send your hips back to your heels. One more time, just like that. Breath in. Lift. Exhale. Modify child's bow. Inhale. Swing forward. Belly down. Exhale. Press up through your cat pose. Shift your hips back. This time, tuck your toes. And press your way up to your first downward facing dog. Take a couple breaths here, moving around. I see a message in the chat, so I'm going to check it real quick. Okay, cool. Everybody be well, take care of yourselves. All right, from your downward facing dog, lift up high to your toes. And then drop your heels over to the right. It's okay to have bent knees here. I know it might find, feel a little bit awkward, but we're looking for a stretch in the side of our body and maybe through the outsides of our legs. Inhale, come back to center. Then pivot the heels to the left. If your legs are more straight, you're pressing back towards your right thigh. We're still dropping down and, uh, down and back towards your legs. Then come back to that downward facing dog. Bend knees really deeply. Point your hips up. Press your chest back and then start to straighten your legs. It doesn't matter if they're fully straight or not. Just let your heels drift toward the mat. Bend knees, totally fine. Bend your knees even more deeply. Walk your hands back to the back of your mat. So you come to a forward fold. We're gonna take a, a rag doll pose here. So make sure you've got about two fists distance between your feet. Bend your knees. Perhaps your belly can rest on your thighs. Let your head drop. You can take elbows. Enhance, sway side to side. Maybe take hands to low back, interlace fingertips, or simply interlace your index fingers. Let everything drift down. Three breaths. At the end of your third exhale, if you've taken any one of those vines, release your fingertips back down. Bend your knees to walk your hands back to that downward facing dog. To make sure that we've got the right distance. It's kind of an awkward approach. Inhale, rise to your toes, come to the top of a plank pose, roll like you're coming through a cat pose. Just make sure your wrists are below your shoulders. All right, on your exhale, chin to chest, pump up your back, roll up and back to down dog. There we go. On your next inhale, lift your right leg up toward the ceiling. Make sure that your pinky toe is pointed down so you're not splayed out to the side. Press your chest back. Deep breath in. On an exhale, we'll only do this one time. Take your knee to your right elbow, shift it forward, keep your hips and heel high. Inhale, up and back, place the foot next to the other, down dog. Left side, inhale, left leg up and back. Again, make sure that even the pinky toe is pointed down. Deep breath in, exhale, knee to left elbow, keep everything high and lifted. Take it up and back, press the foot next to the other, down dog. Lift up the right leg once more. On an exhale, take your knee to your chest, place your foot between your hands toward right thumb. Always feel free to use your hand to guide your foot up. Drop left knee down. Andre and Asana, inhale, arms are up. 
Shrug your shoulders down and away. Press down through either the top of your left foot or tuck your toes, whatever feels best for your knee. Right hip is pulling down and back. Scissor your uh, right heel and your left knee together. Simply breathe. On your next exhale, plant your hands on either side of your front foot. We're going to take a half split pose, Ardha Hanumanasana. So shift your hips back so your right leg becomes straighter or straight. If you're like me and my hip goes all the way back because my leg goes straight, I want to wiggle the right foot forward. So that my hips are more over my knee, just a little bit more sound here. So I'm able to have my hands on the mat. Perhaps you need your copy of the goldfish on either side of you. Flex your toes or your right foot towards your face. Inhale, lengthen out. Right hip pulls back just like Andre and Asana. And on an exhale, you're going to reach your heart forward. So it's like your chin is reaching for your chin, but try not to crane out too much. Find a little bit of softness. Shoulders are still releasing back. And if you're looking for more zhuzh, draw your right heel along your mat so it's causing some resistance. All right, re-bend into the right knee, hands back to frame your front foot. If your back toes aren't tucked, tuck them to lift up your back knee. More weight to your left palm, peel your right fingertips up toward the ceiling. So, wrap your left elbow, inner elbow towards the front, maybe looking up towards your right thumb. Even here, right hip is pulling back at any time, you're welcome to drop your left knee. If you'd like to take a little bit further, if you've been sitting at a desk a lot, <laughs> You can spin all of your toes away from you. Raise your edge of left foot. Lift your hips high. IT band stretch. If you're looking for something more, if you're looking for something more strengthening, you can move to a full Vashi Sasana. Little bend to your left knee for strength. Stack right foot on top of the left. Then re-straighten. Right arm lifts up. Keep your hips lifted. Wherever you've chosen to go, two more breaths. That's it. At the end of that, that next exhale, right hand comes down. Make sure all toes are pointing to the front. Step right foot back if it's not already there. Press up and back, downward facing dog. One big inhale, one big exhale. Next inhale, left leg lifts up and back, long, straight, strong. On an exhale, place your foot between your hands toward left thumb. Lift up the hand if you need. Drop right knee down. Back toes, toe, uh, tuck or untuck, whatever works best. Press through feet, inhale, arms lift, shoulder blades back, we back pinkies toward each other, settle in, Anjayanasana. On this side, left hip is pulling back, allowing you to sit your hips down and forward, press down through the back foot, and again, pull left heel towards right knee, this is going to help scissor up together, square your hips a little more, release the tension from your upper shoulders, Then on your next exhale, drop your hands down to frame the front foot. We move to half split again. Shift your hip back. Left leg becomes straighter or straight. Again, if your leg goes totally straight, you might need to wiggle the left foot forward. Flex your toes towards your face regardless of what's going on with your leg straightness. Inhale, lift up halfway. Exhale, descend down. Try to maintain a pretty flat spine here. If you find it curves a lot, just back out of the pose. Continue to find those deep inhales and exhalations. Left heel drags down and back, perhaps creating a little bit more tension here. Two more breaths. All right, then bend out. Rebend into the front knee. Hands to place back towards the front of your mat, framing front foot, tuck back toes, lift up that knee. More weight to right palm, left fingertips, lift up, low lunge twist. All right, on this side, your left hip is pulling back, stacking shoulders, wrapping inner right elbow toward the front of the room. Option is stay here, or spin all toes away from you onto the razor edge of your right foot, lift your hips high. If you'd like to take it further, stack left foot on top of right, Vashi Sasana, keep your hips lifted, flex your feet, long spine, so you're still trying to keep kind of a Tadasana, Situation in your spine here. Try not to flay out or curl in. Two more breaths. Next exhale, wherever you are, left hand comes down. Make sure all toes are back to the front. Step your left foot back to meet your right if it's not already there. 
Pull your chin to your chest, press up and back, downward facing dog. Inhale one, exhale. Bend your knees, take your knees to your mat, hips to your heels. Your knees can be wide or they can be close together, child's pose. For this one, allow it to be a soft one. We start soft, so your arms are relaxed. If your shoulders are tired, you take your arms alongside your body, palms up, shoulder drift down toward your mat. Return back to your breath, back to your dedication. When you're ready, you're going to press up to your hands and your knees. Realign, knees in line with hips and heels. Tuck your toes, press your hips up and back, downward facing dog once more. Bend your knees, look toward the top of your mat and then step or hop your way all the way to the top to a forward fold. On an inhale, lift up halfway, fingertips to shin, shoulder blades on your back, look forward. Exhale, fold chest to thighs. Inhale, reverse swan dive, press to your feet, reach your arms out and up, palms press above you for half. Exhale, hands to heart center, arms alongside your body. Take a very deep breath in, and a full exhale. We're going to take a sun salutation A. Inhale, arms lift out and up, perhaps gaze up. Exhale, hinge at your hips, take it all the way forward, bent knees are totally fine, release hands down. Breath in, halfway lift, fingertips press against something, exhale, fold. Hands to mat, step back to the top of a plank pose, I'm gonna demonstrate knees down. Drop your knees down to your mat if you would like. On an exhale, lower all the way down to your mat. Flat spine as much as you can. Elbows point up, tops of feet to mat. Inhale, low cobra. Shoulder blades draw back. Exhale, release back down. Press up to hands and knees. Tuck toes back to downward facing dog. Inhale, exhale. Breathe in and out. Third time, inhale, bend knees, look towards top of mat, exhale, step or hop to the top, forward fold, inhale, halfway lift, offer your heart, exhale, fold to honor yourself, press through your feet, reach your arms out and up, palms pressed together, exhale, hands to heart center, and then alongside your body, back to Tadasana. Take a few breaths here in your Tadasana posture, being sure to press down through your feet, Lift up through the crown of your head, lots of space between bottoms of ears and tops of shoulders. Active through fingertips. Even a strong belly here to keep you supported. And we're going to flow back to downward facing dog. If you'd like to move to your own breath, please do so. I'll also guide you. Inhale, arms lift. Exhale, hinge at hips, bow. Inhale, Ardha Uttanasana, halfway lift. Exhale, hold Uttanasana. We're going to step back to the top of a flank pose. If you like, press up and back to downward facing dog, or on an exhale, lower through chaturanga, elbows raised by your rib cage. Untuck toes, inhale, upward facing dog. Everything is away from the neck, upper hands and feet. Exhale, chin to chest, lift up your hips. Rock it back, downward facing dog. On your next inhale, lift your right leg up toward the ceiling, long straight strong. Exhale, place your foot between your hands toward right thumb. Okay, things are going to get weird. We're going to take that down dog hybrid. Angle your left foot down, kind of like warrior two, and keeping your right knee over your ankle. If you'd like a block, bring it out to your left side. If you don't want one, hands on to mat or to finger pads. Continue to reach your right knee out toward the right so it stays stacked. Down dog hybrid. Inhale, lift out halfway. Exhale, start to sink your chest down. Keep pressing through the outer edge of your left foot. Let your head hang heavy. Next inhale, lift up halfway. Walk your torso and your arms back towards the front leg, find that alignment. And then on an exhale, you're gonna to unravel to warrior two. So press through your feet, lift out and up. Find your warrior two posture. Arms are parallel with the earth. Shrug shoulders back. Pull your low belly in, find stability, gaze out beyond your right middle finger. We're going to take a flow between this and an exalted triangle. So flip your right palm. Left hand drops. Inhale, straighten right leg, arm lifts up. Exhale, return to the warrior two, descend. Yes. 
Inhale, take it up and back. Keep pressing through outer edge of left foot to the arch lifts up. Exhale, warrior two. Third time like that. Exhale. All right. This time, straight front leg only. Then turn your right toes in. So the outer edges of your feet are parallel with the short ends of your mat. Take your hands to your hips, elbows point back. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, hinge at your hips. Keep your hands at your hips if you can. Always option to drop them down. If you need a little bit of support, you've got a block nearby. And if you would not like support, you can stay right here. Shift the weight more into the balls of your feet. Lift up halfway. Exhale. Hinge forward. If you would like, you can start to walk your hands back. Just make sure that the weight is a little bit more into the balls of your feet, keeping your hips more in line with your heels. On your next in breath, lift up halfway. We're going to take a skandasana over to the right. So send your right toes out, shift your hips over to the right, your left toes come up. Depending on your anatomy, you might be able to drop your hips all the way down and keep your heel down. My body doesn't do that. I might have to lift my heel. If you'd like, you can keep your hands down to support you or bring your hands into your heart center. In this posture, it is okay if your knee is beyond your heel as long as it is comfortable. If it's not, then you need to come out of the pose a bit. Simply breathe. At your next exhale, release your hands back down to the mat for support. Breathe straight in the front leg. Find a little bit of movement from side to side. Loosen it up. And then you're going to keep it low. Pivot towards the front of your mat so that you're in a low lunge. You're on the ball of your back foot. Step your right foot back to meet your left high plank. Option to take a vinyasa or simply press up to downward facing dog. From downward facing dog, inhale, left leg up and back. On an exhale, place your foot between your hands toward left thumb. We're going to take that down dog hybrid again. So angle right foot down like it's warrior two. So the outs, your right foot is pointed in somewhat. Your left knee is over your left ankle and thigh is dropped to your bent. You're going to wander your torso and your arms toward the right at an angle. If you'd like to have a block to support you, bring it with you and stay lifted or you can come all the way down. Inhale, lift up halfway. Find lots of space here. Exhale, perhaps deepen. Remember to bring the left knee so it is stacked over your left heel. It might feel like it's playing out to the left, but it's probably not. Feel free to check. Continue to press to the outer edge of your right foot. On your next inhale, lift up halfway. Rewalk your torso and arms toward the front leg. Press through both feet. On an exhale, unravel to your warrior two. Come out of the pose as much as you need so that you can enter. You might have heel to heel alignment. You might have a little bit more space. Whatever's working for you today is what's working for you. Shoulders back, arms out. Square your shoulders toward the long side of your mat and look out beyond your left middle finger, blurring everything out. Three times we'll move from here to an exalted triangle. Flip left palm, right hand drops, inhale, lift up, right leg becomes straighter, exhale, return back to warrior two. Twice more, your breath. After that final warrior two, straighten the front leg, turn your left toes in, so again, the outsides of your feet are parallel with the short edges of your mat. You can keep your hand at waist with elbows pointed back. If you're looking for a deeper shoulder stretch, interlace your fingertips together, press the heels of your hands together best you can. Drop knuckles, inhale, look up, exhale, hinge forward. Again, shift the weight a little bit more towards the balls of your feet. You can reach your knuckles up and over. If that's not working for you, anytime drop your hands. Just be sure to take your hands down to your hips first, and then release down to protect your shoulders. We'll be here for several breaths, so take your time. On 
On your next inhale, lift up halfway. We're going to take Skandasana again. So your left toes will start to point out. Your right toes will as well. Send your hips down more towards your left heel. Right toes are lifted up to, toward the ceiling. And then again, your left heel might lift. You, maybe you can get your hips all the way down, keeping your foot flat. This really has so much to do with just the way that your body is built. You can keep your hands to the mat to provide you with support. Or if you'd like, hands to heart center, sit low. Your inner elbow of the left arm will come to the inside of your left knee, perhaps. Just breathe. Then release your hands back down to the mat if you took them up. Start to straight the front leg, the length of the left leg, bring it back in. Again, find a little movement left and right, loosen up. And then as you're ready, keeping it low, bend through the left knee, but a cycle back towards the front of the mat to your low lunge with your left knee forward. You're going to step your left foot back to meet your right. High plank pose. Option for a vinyasa or to step back to downward facing dog, your choice. Once you've made it to your downward facing dog, make sure that you have had at least two full rounds of breath. And at the end of that second exhale, I encourage you to take a child's pose or another restful posture of your choice. We're going to take that sequence again. We're gonna add on to it. So always feel free to move ahead of me if you would like because you know where you're going. We're going to have five more breaths in the restful posture of your choice. And then we'll meet in downward facing dog. You can use this time for anything you would like, whether you'd like to take some water, we're gonna pose for rest. First of five breaths begins. But now you might have finished up that fifth exhale. If you're in the middle of the posture, take your time. And we'll all meet back in downward facing dog. Okay, we're gonna soften things up. So take a really deep breath in and then flutter your lips like a horse. <laughs> One more time for good pressure. Inhale. Exhale. Great. Next breath in, right leg up and back, long, straight, strong. Exhale, place your foot between your hands toward right thumb. Angle left foot down like warrior two. Take your torso and arms at an angle. Down dog, warrior two, hybrid. We'll be here for three breaths. The end of that third exhale, start to lift back up, realign torso and arms to front leg. On your exhale, press through feet, come up to your warrior two posture. Shoulders shrug back, look over right middle finger. Option is stay here or three times with me to an exalted triangle. Inhale, takes you up. Exhale, descend. Twice more. So you can keep shoulders stacked and in the same plane as your hips. Maintaining the arch of your left foot lifted. After that third warrior two, straighten the front leg, turn your right toes in. Any arm choice you'd like, arms out or hands to hips, inhale, lift up, exhale, hinge forward. Option to keep arms lifted or to drop down to the mat. Three breaths here. After your third exhale, lift up halfway. Move to Skandasana to the right side. So you spin your right toes up, left toes up. Send your hips down towards your right heel. You can hands to mat or to block or to your heart. Whenever your next exhale occurs, hands come down to mat. Get out of the pose. Swing a little bit back and forth. Give yourself some relief. And then you're going to keep it low, pivot towards the front of your mat so you're in a low lunge. 
This time, if you know that you'd like to use a block, make sure it's toward the front of your mat. Press through both feet, hover fingertips away from the mat. High lunge, shoulders back, bend through your right knee. Okay, we're going to move to a warrior three posture here. If you know you like your block, you can use it here. It has three heights. So you're going to shift your weight forward, sending the weight to your right leg. Maybe your left leg lifts up immediately. Try to keep a long straight spine like Tadasana, or take a couple uh, hops up. Does not matter how much your leg lifts. But like what we were doing earlier, can you drop your hip so that even your pinky toe is facing down? If your hands are at lock, you can still lift up. And your legs don't need to be straight. Both can be bent. We simply work towards straightness. Maybe it happens eventually. Simply breathe. All right, things are gonna get interesting. From here, we're going to move to a half moon posture. So again, you've got a block nearby if you would like. Start to lift up again. Left hand to left hip, right hand is down. Use your hand to guide the hip out. Left toes in line with your nose. Notice if you're crouching forward, so find that tadasana in your spine, <laughs> working on balance. And if you'd like, left fingertips up toward the ceiling. Breathe. We work towards straight legs, we don't need them. Two more breaths, that is all. Press down through everything that is touching black block or mat or floor. And then when you're ready, left foot meets right, left hand comes down, ragdoll pose. Get soft, get low, let it go. Shrug your shoulders, maybe again. Take hands to elbows. And when you're ready, inhale, lift up halfway, fingertips to shins of your mat, gaze forward. Exhale, forward fold. Reverse swan dive, press through your feet, reach your arms out and up, take up space, gather up everything that supports your dedication. On an exhale, bring your hands to heart center. Drawing it in further, releasing everything else on the exhale. Option to keep hands at heart or arms alongside your body. We'll be here for three breaths. We're going to flow back to downward facing dog. Feel free to move to your own rhythm, to your own breath, but I'll also provide guidance. Inhale, arms lift, maybe palms press, gazes up. Exhale, hinge at your hips, bent knees are fine, flat spine, take it all the way down. Breath in, halfway lift, gaze forward, press through both feet, exhale, fold. Hands to mat, step back to your plank pose. On an exhale, lower to or toward your mat, Hovering through Chaturanga, coming all the way down. Whichever version, untuck toes, inhale for your back bend, shoulder blades kiss behind you, find strength through your belly. Exhale, lift hips up and back, downward facing dog, breathe. And then on your next inhale, left leg up and back, create space, exhale, use it, place your foot between your hands towards your left thumb. Down dog hybrid, angle your right foot down like it is warrior two. Take your torso and your arms toward the angle toward the right. Again, make sure your left knee is reaching out so the knee is stacked over ankle. Find your posture of downward facing dog in your torso and arms, maybe fingertips are lifted, three breaths. Keep the right arch of foot lifted. Then walk your torso and arms back towards the front of your mat, find your strength. Exhale, press down, unravel warrior two. Again, come out of the posture if you need. Shoulders are square toward the long side of your mat. If you would like to stay here, you may, of course. Or if you'd like to follow me, three times we'll take an exalted warrior. Inhale, secure you. I'm sorry, exalted triangle. Trying to keep shoulders in line, one plane. After that final warrior, two. Straighten the front leg, turn your left toes in. Your option for a wide-legged forward fold, hands to hips, interlace fingers, arms out wide. Whichever option you've chosen, on an inhale, create space and length. And then on an exhale, hinge at your hips, shifting the weight a little bit more towards the balls of your feet. Once you get to where you're going, three breaths.
At the end of your third exhale, lift up about halfway. Skandasana to the left. So toes start to point out, left knee bends. Right knee might have a bend to it as well. And then you're going to bring your hands to heart center or keep them on the block or on mat. Remember, your left toes are in line with your heel, knee in line with toes as well. Once you get to where you're going, three breaths. At the end of that third exhale, if your hands are up, drop them down, come back towards the long side of your mat, find a little bit of movement, get out of your own way, break the posture completely. And then keeping it low, you're gonna come back to the front side of your mat. All right, you're in a low lunge, hover your fingertips away, low slingshot, lift all the way up, high lunge, feel free to come out of the posture and then re-deepen it. If you notice that your ribs are poked out, pull them in. Feel like your hip tips are pulling upward. This is gonna engage everything and you might find a deeper stretch as well through your right hip flexors. Okay, from here, we're going to move to that warrior three posture. So shift your weight forward, sitting the weight to your left leg. Option to just hop up one breath or take a couple steps. You can take supported hands to block. Again, you've got three heights to this block. Right hip, drop it down so that you are dropping even your pinky toe facing down. Pull your low belly in, flex, point, point your foot. It doesn't matter to me, just find some activity there. Three, nothing lasts forever. Even though it sounds like I talk forever. All right, and now things get interesting once again. Hands to block or left hand down to the mat. Right hand to right hip to guide it open so that your right hip is opening outward. Left fingertips below left shoulder is going to help you here. Step right shoulder over left. Whenever you're ready, right fingertips lift up. Remember, both legs don't have to be straight. Eventually we work to that. Still find Tadasana and your spine. Inhales lengthen. Exhale. Find strength. Press down through everything is touching through the mat. Lift up and press out through everything that is lifted. Everything is conspiring with you. And then when you are ready, your right foot will tap down next to the left. Right hand will come down. Ragdoll pose. Shake it out. Let it go. Shrugs, sways, whatever works best. Perhaps you need stillness. And then release your fingertips down to the mat. If you're taking any kind of a bind. On an inhale, lift up halfway. Legs might come straighter. Exhale, full chest to thighs. Keep it strong. Press through feet. Reach your arms out and up. Reach your shins away from each other for strength and stability. Exhale, hands to heart. Allow your eye gaze to soften. Perhaps allow your eyelids to close. What in your practice is the same? What is immutable? What has changed? Simply observe. We're going to flow back to downward facing dog. There's going to be time for a rest. If you'd like to move with me, you can. If you'd prefer to move to your breath, if you'd like to stay a little bit longer in your Tadasana posture, your Sanskriti, know that you do have time. This is your practice. And if you're moving with me, inhale, reach arms out and up. Exhale, forward fold and bow. Inhale, offer your heart. Exhale, return that offering to yourself. Step back to the top of a plank pose. Option to press up and back to downward facing dog or throw, flow through vinyasa on an exhale. Shift your way forward, knees up or down, elbows in. Untuck toes. 
Inhale, back bend, press your hands on the tops of feet. Exhale, press it up and back, downward facing dog. Give yourself at least two full rounds of breath in your downward facing dog, regardless of the option you've chosen. And at the end of that second exhale, take a restful posture. Child's pose, perhaps, or perhaps sitting on your knees or something else that feels restorative to you. Give yourself at least five more rounds of breath. You can do whatever you'd like. And then we'll meet at hands and the knees. So you can rest, put in a posture, drink water, what have you. First of five breaths begins now. You might be coming upon that fifth breath. And if you are, start to press up your weight to hands and knees. If you need a little bit more time, take it. And then just make sure you've got that alignment. Wrists, elbows, shoulders, knees below hips. I'm going to take just a couple rounds of cow and cat. This can be as confined or as exaggerated as you like. Inhale, drop your belly, lift your hips up, reach your heart forward, gaze up. Exhale, press your hands and knees, arch your spine, take your cervical spine, your neck into it, look back towards your knees or even your belly. Inhale, sweep it forward. Again, as exaggerated and fine as you like. Exhale, press up to your cat pose. Continue to move through these postures. If you'd like, you can start to take a C curve, reaching right shoulder toward right hip on your inhales as you come up and as an exhale, other shoulder and hip coming together. Just make sure that you do equal movements both directions as much as you can. Give yourself two more rounds of breath. So it would be two more cows and cat. And then come back to that tabletop position. I'm going to take something called puppy dog pose or anhatasana. Uh, melting heart. So you're going to walk your hand out toward the toward the corners. You might not reach the corners of your yoga mat. Generally keeping your hips over your knees. Angle your inner elbows up and then start to drop your chest down. So you might only come down a little bit. You might come all the way down. Some people have their chin all the way to the floor. Make sure that your belly is engaged here. Keep pressing through the tops of your hands. We don't want to just sink into our shoulders. This is strong. Again, inner elbows wrap up. So it feels like your shoulder blades are like hugging around your torso. Just breathe. Then on your next exhale, all that engagement, belly, palms, um, inner elbows, press up, come back to that tabletop pose. Find a little bit of movement. Shift it out, shift it around. Notice that tension has decided to take up residency and invite it away. And then you're gonna to tuck toes, press up to downward facing dog. We're just gonna be moving to something else and we'll be here for long. Right leg lifts up and back on and inhale. On an exhale, take your knee to your right elbow and then place your foot to the outside of your right hand. You might find that it doesn't come all the way. Use your right hand, guide it all the way up. We're going to take a lizard pose here. So again, block, copy the goldfinch, bring it by you. Left knee can be up or down, this is totally up to you. Same thing with if your knee is down, if your toes are tucked around the top, what feels best on your knee? If it feels at all not great, you might want to turn over your mat to get a double or have a blanket. So, whatever option you have chosen, shrug your shoulders back. Inhale, lift up halfway. Right hip pulls back. Exhale, start to descend your chest down. You might find forearms, you might just bend a little bit forearms to block. Again, there are three heights. You might come to a place where your forearms are completely on the mat. For this version, you're going to pull your right knee in towards your shoulder. So there's a slight activation. That still might mean that your right toes are pointed out to the side. This might feel better on your hips. Try it out.
As you're ready, start to press your way back up onto blocks or hands. Tuck your back toes, lift up your back knee. And then if you'd like, in one fell swoop, you're gonna pull your right knee up and go back to the tripod dog. Option is simply step back to downward facing dog. You can move your knee, heel up, lift up and back. Yes. And then place the foot next to the other. Wiggle it out, let it go. Shake it up. And then we're gonna take the other side, lizard pose. Inhale, left leg up and back. Exhale, knee to left elbow, shift it forward, arch your back like cat. It helps place the foot to the outside. As many steps as you need. Left toes slightly pointed out, very likely. And then if you have the right knee lifted, maybe you keep it lifted. If it was dropped, maybe keep it dropped. Don't have to, just a suggestion. Your back toes tucked around tucked. Again, this version, we're gonna have left knee drawing in. So it's an active um, lizard pose. Whichever option of these you'd like. Inhale, reach your heart forward. Find a little bit of cobra pose through your collar. And exhale, descend. Perhaps onto a block, onto mat. Again, left knee gently drawing in. Toes perhaps out to the left. Simply breathe. As you're ready, when this side starts to feel about the same as the other, begin to press back up to your hands or straighten your elbows, depending on what your depth was. Pop your back toes if your knee is down to lift up your back knee. And again, maybe one fell swoop if you want to move with me from here to a tripod dog, or you simply want to step back to downward facing dog. If you're moving with me, press through your hands and your right toes to pull your heel up, arch your spine, and then lift all the way up. Yes. Place your foot next to the other, downward facing dog, we it out, just breathe. And then bend your knees, look towards the top of your mat, find a little bit of motion. We're gonna come to a seat, so if you're like, no, I'm not hopping, you can just move to a seat if you wanna hop with me. Look forward, little motion, a little bit of momentum, and then on an exhale, pull forward, hop to a seat. Okay, <laughs> we're gonna take a Baddha Konasana posture. Bound angle pose. So unravel your feet if you had that little like hop forward seat with me. Lean back a bit, knees bent, soles of feet are gonna come together, your knees come wide. So we're gonna take an active version here. So I'm gonna want to have a little bit more like closer space between hips and heels. To get there, I'm gonna lift up my hips and I'm gonna scooch forward. Not a whole lot, your legs are tight these days. Hands to feet, inhale, lift up. Keeping that spine like we're in Tadasana, on an exhale, shift forward. If you come to a place where your back starts to round, shoulder blades are, I mean, your shoulders are dripping forward, pull it out and back, heart reaches forward, exhale, hinge. You might come to a place where your elbows can assist you, and then press down through your calves just a bit. If you'd like, you can even take your hands to the insides of your feet, open them up a bit, little massage, simply focus. Inhale, lift up halfway. Exhale, release your pose. Take your fingertips behind you. If you took that closer movement, lift your hips up, scoot your hips back. We're gonna take a, um, a fire log pose this time. So again, if you'd like some props nearby, um, it can be intense. So whether you've got a blanket rolled up, um, block, whatever you got. Roll up your shirt, I don't know. So. I'm gonna start with my right foot on the bottom. So I'm gonna start with both knees bent. I'm gonna lean back to give myself lots of space. Flexing right foot. So I'm placing my, uh, my shin down so it's about parallel with the short side of my mat. Lifting up my left foot, flexing the foot again. Placing my heel on my right knee. And then, depending how things are going, I might stop here and might start to drop my knee down towards the other heel. I might need to adjust a bit. You might have a lot of space if this is uncomfortable. Then you can place a prop here, or you can even take your hands, lift it up, you're gonna prop your back. If it feels good to you, you might drop down even more. Keep both feet flexed. If you've got this, um, if you feel secure here, you can begin to hinge your way forward. For hand placement, place them in the same plane as your shoulders. So if I'm coming forward, I'm gonna move my hands forward with my shoulders, if I'm back, I gotta do that. 
So flat spine like Tadasana. Shrug your shoulders back. Active version. What are you holding on to that you don't need to? Notice that things have changed. And if you've come forward, use your hands, provide support, lift your way up. We're all going to lean back. Uncross the top leg first. Place your left foot towards the outer edge of your mat. Lift up your right knee. Place your right foot to the outer edge of your mat. Cool. Drop both knees over to the right. It's okay, let your left hip shine up. Take it back to center, wrap it over to the left. Lots of space here. And come back to center. We're gonna take the opposite way. So if it feels familiar to the other way. So for me, if you've been following me, my left leg is gonna be on the bottom this time. Shin is in line with the front of the mat, flexing my foot. I'm gonna lean back again. I'm giving myself a lot of space here. Right foot is flexed. Big heel on left knee. Okay, I'm gonna to start to drop my foot down. Maybe I stop here. Maybe I start to lift my way up. Again, this is about the point where you make sure that your hands are in line with your shoulders. Adjust your, uh, your bump and your thighs as much as you need. Keep both feet flexed. Props as you need them to support, or even just right hand to right thigh, keeping the leg elevated, and this is what you need. You still have your left arm to keep you elevated as well. If you are here, flat spine, lift up, and then start to hinge your way forward. This might not match the other side. Match your leg. What can you let go of that will allow you to deepen? Might not be physical. Once the side starts to feel about the same as the other, sometimes it takes less time, sometimes it takes more. Eventually, you start to walk your way back up if you took the forward fold version. And just make sure, regardless of the version you've taken, you lean back fully so you've got lots of space. You'll uncross right foot. Right foot is more about the edge of your mat. Lift up your left knee. Left foot is more about the edge of the left side of the mat. And then once you're there, allow both knees to drop over to the left. Get soft. For me, I feel this a lot in my hip flexors. And then shift it over to the other side. Okay, come back to center. And if you're still taking those twists, do what you gotta do. The next pose we're gonna move toward is, um, is a bridge pose. We're also gonna do a little bit of a bridge flow. So you'll have a little bit of those um, experiences. So start to walk, heel toe your feet back toward each other, but not to touch. Hands to the backs of your thighs, and you can slowly lower your way down. Sneaky cord. <laughs> okay. Make sure that your heels are close enough that with your arms alongside your body, you can about tickle the backs of your heels. So we're first going to start with a bridge pose, and then we'll move into a little bit of a bridge flow. So press through both feet. Press through your shoulders and your hands. Fingertips spread wide. On an inhale, wave your spine up. Press down through your shoulders. Cool. Find a little bit of tension in your bun, bum. This is going to help draw your tailbone down towards the backs of your knees. So you've got lots of hip extension here. If you'd like to take it further, rock over onto one shoulder, hands down. So um, edge of your pinky on the mat, and then the other. And then perhaps interlace those fingers. This will also help you wedge your shoulders underneath you even more. Again, press down through your feet. Lift up your hips. You're going to find more extension through the fronts of your legs by drawing your tailbone down towards the backs of your knees. Again, a little strength through your bum is going to help here. Keep your knees in line with hips. Notice that they're slowing out or toward each other. Try to find that equality. Chin up. One more deep inhale. Exhale. Unravel your arms. 
<laughs> you can hear my cat. And then start to wave down. Maybe you lift up your hips. You've got lots of room for your hips to come down. Just like we did a little bit earlier, separate your feet a little bit more. Drop both knees over to the right. Take these back up, drop them over to left. Then come back to center. Realign your feet in line with your knees and your hips. If you'd like to take a traditional bridge pose, please do that. I'm going to be leading a bridge flow. So you're going to set up the same way. On an inhale, wave your spine up, lift your arms up and back, backs of palms might touch the mat, maybe lift up your heels. On an exhale, wave your spine back down, bring your arms alongside with the heels and the hands drop at the same time, you took the lifted heels. Two more times like that. Inhale, lift up and back. Exhale, take it back. Third time. Exhale. Gently pull your knees towards your chest. <laughs> you take your hands to your shins. Rock from side to side if that feels good. The looser the grip, the more of a massage you'll get down. The more you pull in, you might get a deeper stretch, both through uh, this flexion here and also through your back. What works best for you right now? What is serving you? We're going to take some simple supine twists. Keep your right knee and extend your left leg out. <laughs> Drop it onto the mat. Pull your right knee across your body. Adjust your shoulders as much as you need. And then your right arm comes out. It can be straight out. It can be in uh, cactus arms. And then if you'd like, send your gaze out to the right as well. Left hand can be on the top of your right thigh for a little bit of weight. Allow your eye gaze to soften. Maybe close your eyes. On an exhale, take your head and your knee back to center. Pull your left knee in, extend the right leg out, let it drop onto the mat. Pull your knee across your body, adjust your shoulders as much as you need, left arm out for support, extended, bent elbow, whatever is comfortable for you. And if it's okay on your neck here, you can send your gaze over to the left, soften eyes, close eyelids if that feels okay. And if you need a little bit of weight with the right hand on your left thigh. When you're ready on an exhale, take your head and your knee back to center. Pull both knees in towards your chest. Pull up your forehead maybe towards your kneecaps. Take a really deep breath in this confined position. Fill up all the way. And then on an exhale, completely release. Allow your feet to come down and legs extend, arms alongside your body. The final posture of this class will be Shavasana. If there's any other poses, adjustments you need to make, Please make them now, whether you need to add clothes, remove clothes, add props. Whatever's gonna take you to a place where you can find stillness. And then once you've come to that place, allow the soles of your feet to get soft, your ankles are relaxed. Your calves are soft, your kneecaps drop, your thighs are heavy, your pelvis releases, relaxes, your belly softens, your back breath flows easily, shoulder blades are released back, creating more space, upper arms, elbows, forearms, wrists, backs of hands, palms, fingertips. Release, get soft. Bottom jaw separates from the top. 
tongue falls from the roof of your mouth, your cheeks are hollow, your eyes are heavy behind closed eyelids and your forehead is sleeping. Allow your thoughts to drift back to your dedication, the intention that you have set. And as your breath becomes larger, imagine if the breath is flowing through your body all the way to your extremities. And with that breath, allow some small movements to occur. Let those grow larger. Whenever you're ready, roll over onto one side, traditionally the right side, pausing in this transition. And keeping your eyes closed or pretty close, make your way to a seated posture of your choice for a brief reflection and meditation. You are the sky. Everything else is just the weather. I'll be singing the sound of Om one time. I invite you to join me if you would like. Bring your palms together in Anjali Mudra, thumbs to sternum. First, we'll take a collective inhale and exhale. Breathe in to chant. Uh, Inhale, reach arms out and up, palms press above your head. And on an exhale, take your thumbs to the space between your eyebrows for clarity of thought, to your lips for clarity of speech, and then back to your heart for clarity of action. Thank you so much for sharing this time with me. It means so much. I appreciate you. I am so grateful. In the name of the highest good, namaste.